Hello DCS pilots, Viper drivers and an especially warm welcome to the returning subscribers. It's great to have you back again and in this one we're going to take a look at the F-16 Viper and a dead stick landing. Dead stick landing is of course when an aircraft loses the ability to propel itself through the air. All that remains is the height that the aircraft's at and a glide ratio which will hopefully take you back to the base. Join me at 20,000 feet as we begin on the journey. So strap in, let's begin. If we come over to the bingo page here, we can see that actually we've almost run out of fuel. We've ticked below what the system can count and there the engine goes. I've still got little ways to go to the airfield. So this video is going to be about gliding. So the first thing we're going to have to do, get rid of master arm. If we do have any stores attached to the aircraft now is the time to get rid emergency jettison i'm going to turn my lights off as well as the externals just to try and save what little energy i have we're then going to click down to reset the warning here so we get rid of that flashing and then move the switch upwards forget the navigation ins all of that is out the window we can just use the basic analog system here to try and gain a vague idea of how we're doing again this isn't completely precise what we're going to try and do is get a five degree down slope going so forget the flight path marker it's irrelevant at this point we're going to use that cross that's just above it to initiate there approximately a five degree descent in addition to that we have the backup ADI here that we can use. And again, we've got about a five degree descent. With the five degree descent underway, the aircraft will stabilize quite nicely. See, we're started at 20 or 25,000 feet. It will stabilize down as the aircraft descends down into thicker air. You'll eventually see the AOA leveling off around five degrees as well. So if you put these two together, the aircraft's pitching down five degrees. We've got an additional five degrees angle of attack. Essentially, the aircraft is sliding down a 10 degree path relative to the horizon. Looking out through the front window, we see the airbase here. We've got plenty of height. That's fine. If we weren't high enough, well, the obvious answer is eject unless you've got a nice road or some other surface to land on. So this video is going to be about this. So we're going to continue this five degree descent. If you are making turns, limit the turns to 45 degrees or less. See, we've got these markers here on the heads up display. If you don't have them, this is the switch that you need to turn on and off. You need to put it actually to the off position to get those marks there. And we've got 10, 20, 30 and 45 degree. You don't want to be sharper than that. If you are turning 45 degrees, allow a couple of extra degrees in your descent. So don't aim for five degrees. Go for about seven. And then once you return wings level again, pitch up to about five degrees. Don't let the speed run out. Remember, if the speed runs out, there is no recovery. If you fly slow, the F-16 will fly in incredibly inefficiently and you won't get anything like 10 degrees overall and now we're going to try and figure out the best runway to land on given the height that we've got so we don't want to risk running out of height but we don't want to come in too hot because there's no go arounds either so for now we're just going to maintain this angle of descent of around five degrees I zoom my view out a little bit you can see there's the horizon if the airfield gets too close to the horizon then we are too low so I'm going to guess currently that looks to be about 20 degrees if not further below so we are too high still can start allowing the speed now that we are really getting close down to about 250 knots why 250? Because it's the safe speed to lower the gear. Plus, once we do lower the gear, we still have around 100 of knots to play with. But don't lower the gear yet. Anything like that is a final act once we are completely committed and know which runway we're going to go for. 
I'm going to start making my way towards the field. This runway that we are parallel to now that runs from the left to right, the near one. I'm aiming for that runway coming from that end that I'm looking at now down that way. That's my plan. The speed dropping a little low, so I'm going to lower the nose again to try and get some of that back. And to turn in towards the airfield now. Height. Beginning to run out. The gear does deploy quite quickly. And we can still use air brakes. But don't, again, don't use until you are fully committed. I'll put my controls on screen so that you can see what I'm doing. Again, just making small movements. The F-16 will feel very slow and sluggish to respond. It's not, like, it's not at all like it behaves normally. So here we are. I'm going to pull back just a tad. Considering whether to go on the runway. Now I'm going to go for this one. So now I'm dumping the gear, gear down now. Going to come level. Going to get into that flare again. Pulling alpha is a huge way to bleed off speed. So make sure you do it when you're right close to the ground. Going to deploy my air brakes now as well. Holding that. And we're down. Don't pump the brakes like you normally might do. Push the brakes down and keep your feet pushed down. So remember hydraulic pressure is of the essence here. And we don't want to be pumping the brakes. Because we... We all run out of hydraulic pressure. So just keep them down. Forget about the brakes cooking. It is what it is. And as we reach the end of another video here, it's been nice to have you with me today. If you do have anything to say on this, you feel I missed something or you do something differently, perhaps, then do leave it in the comments section below. I do read them. Perhaps I will include your comments in a future video. I have a habit of doing that. It's always nice to involve the comment section in videos. It is, after all, an interactive YouTube community. And a special thanks to those people who leave the channel positive feedback. It's very much appreciated. Thank you very much for that. And also a thank you to the people who point out some of the mistakes that I've made, perhaps some oversight. Comments like that, very, very useful. Do keep them coming. We all learn from them, especially me. I am, after all, by no means perfect. Until next time, wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.